I'm the only major candidate who opposed this war from the beginning. And as president, I will end it. This is why, as president, I will make the fight against al-Qaeda and the Taliban the top priority that it should be. Second, I will cut tens of billions of dollars in wasteful spending. That's why I've proposed an additional $1 billion in non-military assistance each year. I will cut investments in unproven missile defense systems. I will not weaponize space. I will slow our development of future combat systems. We need more troops, more helicopters, more satellites, more Predator drones in the Afghan border region. Now, I had no doubt, and I said at the time when I opposed the surge, that given how wonderfully our troops perform, if we uh, place 30,000 more troops in there, then we would see an improvement in the security situation and which we would see a reduction in the violence. We can send 15,000 more troops, 20,000 more troops, 30,000 more troops. Uh, I don't know any uh, expert on the region or any military officer that I've spoken to uh, privately that believes that that is going to make a substantial difference on the situation on the ground. I've always said that the pace of withdrawal uh, would be dictated by the safety and security of our troops and the need to maintain stability. Uh, that assessment has not changed. I tend to end this war. I have seen no information that contradicts the notion that we can bring our troops out safely at a pace of one to two brigades per month. And again, that pace translates into having our, uh, our combat troops out in 16 months. Those are not statements that I ever heard when I was sitting in the pews uh, at this church. Did I ever hear him make remarks that could be considered controversial while I sat in the church? Yes. You can walk out of a church. I mean, you can go up to a pastor well, and, and say, said, this and, is wrong. And, and, and as I said, Anderson, if I had heard any of these statements, I probably would have walked out. And I probably would have told Reverend Wright that they were wrong. Uh, but they were not uh, statements that I heard when I was in church. So no one Did I ever hear him make remarks that could be considered controversial while I sat in the church? Yes. If the government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God bless America, no, 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 not God bless America, God damn America, that's it. Uh, I don't think that... Uh, uh, my church is actually particularly controversial. Will you as president say we are out of NAFTA in six months? I have said that I will renegotiate NAFTA, so obviously you'd have to say to Canada and Mexico that that's exactly what we're going to do. And I think actually Senator Clinton's answer on this one is right. But how much of that bluster is real? CTV News has learned that within the last month, a senior member of the Barack Obama campaign telephoned the Canadian ambassador to the United States, Michael Wilson. In that call, the Obama operative warned the ambassador that NAFTA would become part of the debate in the Democratic primaries and that Obama would take some heavy swings at the trade deal, but told the ambassador, don't worry, it's just campaign rhetoric. It's not serious. But it goes to the question of truthfulness. In other words, did Barack Obama say one thing privately to a foreign government and then say something entirely different to the voters of Ohio and Texas. And it appears that tonight that's exactly what he did, and that's exactly... In a TV ad in Pennsylvania on his energy proposals, Barack Obama says, quote, I don't take money from oil companies. The truth is, no candidate takes money from oil companies directly because it's illegal to accept donations from corporations. A quote today from Senator Barack Obama, which which puzzled me. He said that we should have sex education in kindergarten. I'm not, yeah, I'm not kidding you. Um, and, I, and I scratch my head as I hear that. Sex education in kindergarten. I remember him uh, using this in, a camp, in his campaign against me, saying Barack Obama supports uh, teaching sex education to kindergartners. <laughs> and you know, which I didn't know what to tell him. Um, <laughs> but, but it's the right thing to do. Uh, but it's the right thing to do. But it's the right thing to do. Uh, my view on FISA has always been that um, 
this administration acts like violating civil liberties is the way to enhance our security. It is not. The issue of the phone companies per se. No more ignoring the law when it is inconvenient. Uh, it is a close call for me. There are no shortcuts to protecting America. You will not see a dime of increased taxes. Not one dime. Not your payroll tax. The best idea, I think, is to raise the cap on the payroll tax. Not your income tax. Your new tax plan is going to tax me more, doesn't it? Not your capital gains tax. Why would you want to increase anybody's taxes right now? Why would you want to do that? Anyone, anyone in America, when we have such a tough time, when these small business people like Joe the Plumber are going to create jobs unless you take that money from him and spread the wealth around. I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for it. I think when you spread the wealth around, his campaign tried to clean up a sizable Memorial Day gaffe about his family's role in liberating a notorious Nazi concentration camp. I had a uncle who was one of the, um, who was part of the first American troops to go into Auschwitz. Obama's point dealt with the need for more mental health services for today's veterans, but it was built on false history, both about his family and World War II. First, Obama didn't have an uncle who served in the U.S. Army. Second, Russian forces liberated the Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland in January of 1945. Obama's dubious claim is inconsistent with world history and demands an explanation, the Republican National Committee said in a statement. Obama's frequent exaggerations and outright distortions raise questions about his judgment and his readiness to lead as commander in chief price in my life i learned that my sins could be redeemed and that if i placed my trust in jesus then he could set me on a path to eternal life when i submitted myself to his will i can't simply point to the teachings of my church or evoke god's will it was that newfound faith that fortified my commitment. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay, and that eating uh, shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith to the Sermon on the Mount, a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. Each, as the world knows, will never start a war. Leading Democratic presidential candidate Senator Barack Obama issued a warning to Pakistan today, saying... He would be prepared to order military attacks against Al-Qaeda targets inside Pakistan. President Musharraf will not act. We will. Pakistan, being a sovereign country, will never allow any other country to send troops to its territory for any purpose. And President Musharraf will not act, we will. If you look at Obama's voting record, I mean, he has voted to, you know, not to end the war. He has voted to finance the war. So his rhetoric is playing uh, to the people that uh, come my way. But he, he is every bit as much of an intervention. He wants to send more troops in Afghanistan. He wants to broaden the military. So I think it's a fraud what he's talking about when he wants to really get out of, out of Iraq. I do not share his views with respect to Israel. Uh, I have said so clearly and unequivocally. Um. To Dr. Brzezinski, uh, I can't say enough about uh, his contribution to our country. Uh, he is one of our most outstanding scholars, uh, one of our most outstanding thinkers. Uh, he has proven to be an outstanding friend uh, and somebody who I've learned an immense amount from. America has been hijacked, not by Al-Qaeda, not by Bin Laden, but by a group of tyrants. That should be of great concern to all Americans.